The graphs of the function f and g are illustrated here on the screen. We can see that f and g are both piecewise linear functions. Uh, suppose that u equals f composed with g of x. Can we compute u prime of 1? Well, we could try to come up with formulas for what happens for our functions f and g at the number 1, but it turns out the chain rule allows us to compute the derivative just from the graphs we see right here. Because if we're trying to compute u prime at 1, what we need to do is you need to find u prime, which u prime, of course, is an abbreviation for du dx. And the chain rule tells us that du dx, this is equal to du dg times dg dx, where g, of course, is this inner function we see right here. So in other words, if we want to compute u prime, this is going to equal the derivative of f evaluated at g of 1, and we're going to times that by g prime at 1. All right, so we need to evaluate these things here. So what can we do? So let's first think about g of 1 for a moment. g of 1 means that we come along the, to the x-axis till we hit 1. Then we climb up until we find some coordinate right here. So we see that g of 1 is going to equal uh, 3 right there. I'm going to label that on the graph in case we have to use it again in the future. So we have this point 1, 3 right there. So g of 1 g of 1 is equal to 3. What does it mean to take g prime at 1? Uh, where g prime at 1 means the slope of the tangent line at g, okay? And so when we look at g at 1, since it's a linear function, the, the tangent line is just the function itself. The slope of the function at x equals 1 is what g prime of 1 is trying to calculate. So let's see if we can find the slope of this line. Well, notice if we go over 1, down 3, this gives us a slope of negative 3. That's going to be the derivative in that situation. g prime at 1 is going to equal negative 3. All right. With that perspective in mind, what do we have to compute? We still have to compute f prime at 3. Um, so as we need to find the slope of f at the point x equals 3. So if you come along the graph here, here's x equals 3. And then we're going to climb up the graph right here. So we find this point right here. Well, while the point, uh, you know, it's some type of fraction, we could figure that out if we want to. What we need to figure out is the slope at, of this sector right here. But this is just, again, a linear function. Notice there is a point right here, and there's a point right here that maybe is a little bit easier to find the slope for. So this one is over 2, up 4. So we have the point 2, 4 right there. This one is, let's see, 2, 4, 6, up 3. So this is the point 6, 3. So if we try to compute the slope here, we're going to get m, just by the usual slope formula, is going to be 3 minus 4 over 6 minus 2. We end up with a negative 1 over uh, 4. So negative 1 fourth is the slope of the function at that location. So this tells us that f prime, so let's write this again here. We have to compute f prime at 3 times it by g prime at 1. The slope of f at 3 is equal to negative 1 fourth. The slope of g at 1 was equal to negative 3. And so putting those together, we end up with the slope negative 3 over negative 4, which is actually 3 fourths. So without actually seeing the function, we don't see the function u. We see the function f and we see the function g. But we can calculate what the slope of the tangent line is going to be for the function u at 1. So what I want to do is then repeat this exercise, but let's come up with a new function. Let's look at the function v this time. v is going to be g of f of x. So we swap the order. The chain rule still applies here. v prime, uh, v prime at 1. This is going to equal g prime evaluated at f of 1. And we're going to times that by f prime at 1. So what are the, what are the, about these functions do we know? Well, we have to compute f of 1 again. So we, we haven't done that one yet. So coming along f1, remember f is the green function. We go over 1. We're going to come up 1 right here. So we do find a point. I'm going to label it. We get 1, 2. So f of 1 is equal to 2. So that means we have to compute g prime of 2 and times that by f prime at 1. Well, g prime of 2, where is x equals 2? x equals 2 right here. Ooh. What is this? This is a sharp corner. Um, we notice when you come from the left, when you come from the left, this slope wants to be negative 3. But if we were to come from the right, that would be a positive. So if we haven't computed it yet, uh, we'll probably need to eventually. But notice because we have this sharp corner, the derivative doesn't exist right here. G prime at 2 does not exist. 
So it actually doesn't matter what f prime at one is, the slope of that tangent line. Uh, we haven't done it yet. It turns out the answer to this is that it doesn't exist. Uh, v prime at one uh, is undefined. So we can see that from the graph right here. Uh, one last example, let's consider w to be g of g of x and find w prime at one. So to find that one, to find w prime at one, again, by the chain rule, we're gonna take g prime, evaluate at g of one, and then we have to times that by g prime at one. So what are the what do we know here? We already did g prime of one. Remember we did that earlier. It's negative three. So that we can throw in already. Have we done g of one already? Uh, the answer is yes. We did it over here, right? So that was a three. So that then. So what we have to do now is we have g prime at three, the slope of the function g at three, and we times that by negative three, which was the slope at one. Um, which, when we investigate the graph, we haven't done that one yet already. Uh, notice x equals 3 would be over here. This is our point. We need to figure the slope at that point. So now we're at a point where we should compute the slope of this thing. I'm going to use this corner to help me with the slope because this was an x-intercept, uh, 2 comma 0. Can I find another point? Aha, here's one right here. Counting it over, 2, 4, 5, 5 over, and it's 2 up. So we can use that to help us find the slope here. So g prime at 3 is going to equal 2 minus 0 over... 5 minus 2, so we get 2 thirds as the slope at that point. And so putting it in over here, we're going to get 2 thirds times that by negative 3. That simplifies to be negative 2. So the derivative of w at 1 is going to equal this negative 2. And so this shows us how we can compute the derivative of a composition of function if we have the graphs of these two composition factors. We, it all comes from the chain rule here.